Welcome back, everyone, to the LCS Proving Grounds. And you wanted a war? Well, we got one right out the gates. Cloud9 Amateur, Area of Effect Esports. Game number one, they win at it, Rebel Fox. It was a 48-minute slugfest between the two of these teams. C9 AM, they bust out a double Siege Mage composition and somehow end up getting outscaled by the side of AoE, which is just astonishing. That is not to discount at all the early game that they had, though, man. We, we, we talked about it a little bit. Speedo, insane to start this game, but also the pathing of XU, the support he got from his lanes, really was the defining moments here. It, this jungle control that they had with the combination of Diego and every one of these champions being there constantly to help in that kind of resistance, it was kind of what led to this early really heavy dominance that was held in C9. Yeah, we saw so much beauty when it came to that early game. It's it's a shame we got to the position that we did really when it is. came to the late game because look at a lot of these plays that did come out from C9. Look at how they played that early game and then look at how it all crumbled. It was a lot of patience coming out from AoE and I think one of the lanes you would see oh. no greater patience was over with Sketch in the bot lane. Yeah, uh, the, the, both sets of bot laners did amazing stuff between the two of them. It was patience, uh, worlds and beyond from AoE, so just getting battered by this double siege mage. <laughs> and we also want to give a ton of props over to the side of Breezy. That ultimate right there, indicative of all being the primary engage for this team. Yes, they had Speedo, who's able to front line really well when it came to picking, trying to set up plays for these siege mages. There was nobody better than Breezy on the likes of this Leona. This came back and forth a ton of times. This is a great moment just to show, uh, you know, highlight what it is that we're talking about but man uh, breezy made this job a lot easier to start off this game for the side of the Zerath and the Six. yeah looking at these replays it feels like we're looking over a c9 amateur win with how dominant that early game was and moments like this that came out of speedo where he just would not die the gore drinker the q the guardian angel all used together to make it so hard for aoe to be able to close out get the kills and get out both top laners had amazing performances. Speedo on the front half of the game was just like obscenely strong. It wasn't until this Ooh. turning point that things really started to flip in the opposite direction all off the back of this insane steal. Again, blind pretty much throughout the entirety. I want to see where the smite came in here. I don't know if that Ooh. was it. I don't even know if the smite ever even came through from the side of XU. It was just a, a very nice play from the side of RVM. But then to punish afterwards with this play was also quite nice. Uh, but the big thing at this point also, this was really the point in the game where Speedo stopped being this kind of like raid boss, unkillable like monster. And this is where Faisal's side laning, where also like Darkwing's side laning, but big props to Faisal, uh, mostly because his side laning and then his ultimates as the likes of this Gnar really came to fruition. This was a great example of it. It allowed Darkwings to get that massive flank and this final one, of course, setting up the team fight that wins them the game. Man, Rebel, and you could see that C9AM were really thinking about these players. They were still trying to be as calculated as they were in the first 25 minutes of it, but they took way too long. AoE were faster the trigger, they were hungrier, and they were quick on trying to bring an end to this game once we got towards these later stages and we're, once they were able to make this comeback. You can see right here, in this final bit, they did not play around. No. They were in and out and only played it carefully, only looked to finish out the game when they knew they could end it. It was, it, it, it's one of these situations where like a, a different team would have likely pulled out of that situation just mm. to keep it very high percentage. They would have wanted to be like, okay, we've been winning team fights. We try to win a team fight around these next objectives and we've taken the gold lead. This is our game one way or another. That is ferocity coming up from the side of AOE saying, okay, we are going to pull right now. That sounds like a Darkwing's call in my mind. That seems like something he would be like, all right, oh, we're doing this now. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but that just seems like something that he would be shouting, especially given the fact that he was the one on the, in the Nexus first. So I'll attribute him to that if he wants to yell at me, that's fine. But still, again, that, that unceasing aggression to try to find that five on five time and time and time again, never really also losing every single member on their team. I don't know if they were aced one time in the entirety of the game maybe once or twice i'm not exactly sure uh but oftentimes like even though they were getting bullied the resilience was there they kept their composure and they're able to take this into a win very very incredible stuff from AOE side. yeah very incredible win incredible with the way they played the side lanes as well uh faisal i do want to give him a big shout out because this is a relatively new player he's only had a couple of short-term uh stints with a lot of other orgs but over the last four months he's been really starting to find his stride and you can see it because he plays for his team in that one being able to play the side lanes along with dark wings is what really gave Area of Effect the edge to be able to close that out. 
Yeah, being able to close off a lot of portions of the map, being able to put pressure across the map without really losing too much was huge in that game. There was like slow little bits of gold that were kind of still trickling in from side waves, from towers being taken, from the combination of the Inara and Azir that really did help that. And I agree with you. Faisal was like a question mark to me coming out when we first like heard of this team. I didn't really know much about him. I heard a ton about how good he could be. And I was just like not sold on it. Over the last four months though, that really has come to fruition. And we've seen Faisal develop into an amazing top laner. And that was one of the perfect displays of just how talented he could be. So now I'm curious how the draft is going to go in the next game. Because when it comes to this next game, we saw how game number one went. It was complete dominance out of C9 Amateur. It feels like they don't need to change too much other than just how they approach the game towards the end, towards the late game when they are trying to close this off. I, I will say, um, oftentimes when I talk to coaches and, and they just like spitting out like gas canade of just like this this weird boisterous confidence about like what it is that their team has been doing oftentimes it's like we're doing great we've developed well we're gonna beat everybody like the the teams that i talked to were very direct about what they improved and i loved what c9 did um they have had struggles in previous games one of the big ones i think about was back in last split in challenges uprising they lost i think you were actually covering the game it was c9 against um revival and they were down 12k and revival came back Games like that come to mind as well. Being able to close some of these later games, they have to find somebody who's able to be kind of like the late game weapon that they can use. Oftentimes that's Wixie. That's why we didn't really want to see the Ziggs. Um, while it was a mean composition to have to deal with very early, if you had had something like Ezreal in that later stages, maybe they can throw punches back inside of the team fights. I expect an adaption like that to come through. If they can consistently use something like an Ezreal and also support XU the way that they did, I anticipate this game's going to look a lot cleaner. But this does worry me for C9AM, just because of the trends we've seen from AoE when they uh, have played in previous tournament. EGL is one that pops out right away because that was a tournament where we saw EGP really, really take it to AoE. Two games down right from the get-go in a best of five, and a reverse sweep comes out of AoE Esports. They are a team that can adapt, that can improve, that can be put on the spot, that can be put under pressure, and come back from these situations. Right now, we just saw that in a live game itself. What if they do have that adaption once we head into the draft, once we head into the next game, and they are able to clean up that early game? I do have my worries for C9AM. The... The thing about AoE is it feels like they do not bleed out the way that other teams do. A lot of teams, when you take out 4k gold, like they just like eventually lose. It feels like AoE has never really been a team that's like, if you get them down to 4k, they're not going to fight back. Like they might lose harder, but they're, they're, they're not just going to lose from a slow trickle down. They're not going to slowly lose a game or anything like that. Well, we'll see if C9AM can take it or if AoE are just going to take a quick 2-0. Draft is ready. Game number two will now be going underway. Oh, I'm excited to see. For C9 AM. We do. We get that, which is a very different thing. I doubt we get to see Zareth, unfortunately, because that is a much more red side <laughs> pick. So there's that to talk about, at least. Uh, however, um, now you've got the, the potential for power picks and things to begin off the drafting right. phase. So we get to see the chance of that. Um, and it's actually C9 that ban away. I think we have players swapped on the wrong side. So unless we have kept sides, uh, we just got to iron that out. But if the ban is, of course, on blue side, then I'm anticipating area of effect is still on, on blue side for this one, just because we see that one coming through on that side. Yeah, we'll get those sorted out soon enough. But so far, the same bans as Twisted Fate is taken away, as well as LeBlanc, mm -hmm. that was the second ban. Over on the side of AoE last time, uh, if they are on the same side. <laughs> Maybe just do the Salty Run back. We're already halfway there. Salty you got some fresh ban coming in. Uh, if I was they... C9AM, I would do a Salty Run back. <laughs> <laughs> a salty... I mean, I'm always down to see more Zareth. There's... I have no problems with that whatsoever. Um, again, I think if they were going to do a Salty Run back, the only thing I would change is the Ziggs. I think I would change the Ziggs to something else just to, to give Wixie something very powerful. Uh, if you've got a 48-minute Jinx, that game is so much harder to play if you're on the side of AoE, just because you have Jinx Rockets constantly barraging you. If you don't hit the uh, the Gnar ultimate on Jinx, she just shreds through everybody on your team, and it becomes difficult. We still don't have discrepancies in terms of the bans yet. This is where something interesting could happen, only because Thresh was third ban. They take out Trundle. They're, they're sticking with it. The exactly. gun bans are exactly the same. Salty run back. Are you ready for it? C9 yes. AM. They want to take it home. Let's see what that first pick Ooh. is going to be. The Lee Sin. Maybe. So far, I'm, I'm still curious who's on what side there. Because I'm I, assuming it's just the that top way. that's mixed up. Because now yeah, players are, are on it. the same side. And again, if you're banning Twisted Fate, that's not really too much of a Dark Swings champion. That's much more of a Captain Shrimp yeah. champion. I'm just assuming this is right. So it's just the names that are swapped on the top. Area of effect is on blue side. C9 AM is of course on that red side once again. 
So, I mean, when we did see the run back, we saw it the first time. It was Viego around this point. What else did they mm -hmm. grab at this? It was Viego, Viego. and Ziggs. Was that what Viego they grabbed here? Yeah. I think that was what happened here. So, no, it was Viego mm -hmm. Leona. That's right. Oh, man. Oh, they're, oh, they're, doing, they're, it. they're doing it. <laughs> they're doing it. <laughs> Please don't give us another 48 minute game with a Xerath and a Ziggs. Okay, this is even the same hovering, guys. Like, you're just trolling <laughs> us now. They even did the Lulu and the Yumi in the previous game. Uh, just trolled us out here. I don't know. Mm. Are we going to see a Phalios, Braum, Xer, Nar? Hey. Hey, we're switched back over. So, hey. we do have the same side when it came to selection. Yes, we do. So, we do have the potential for the salty run back. There we go. Okay. Dang it. Yeah, no Aurelia this time being banned out from either side. Oh, so the Kenning got through. We, we, I oftentimes attribute Faisal to being somebody who plays a bit more like frontline type stuff um, and more supportive type stuff. Kenning popping into the meta. He's one of my favorite characters from back in the day. I used to play him as a mid laner all the time. Popping back in, it's one of my favorite things to see just because, again, the harassment you can put onto opposing top laner makes it miserable because of your range. And also team fighting. Insane for the Kenin when you're able to get a solid flank angle. And Faisal, how many times do we see his Nar go in into a team fight? And just go absolutely crazy. This is the only mid laner in amateur that will play Gangplank mid. <laughs> I'm just going to alert you yep. of this fact. I doubt yep. it because we do see the cannon. Maybe that's a matchup that's preferred for Speedo. This is also the patch where that Q got nerfed and became a ranged auto attack. So you don't have that like grasp spam currently. But uh, considerations aside, a lot more damage on barrels into the later stages of the game. I'm just keeping that on my like the, the, the back of my brain right now because I'm like, Captain Shrimp wants it. I would love to see Gangplank mid once again. And he's the only person. I got cheated of it last time it got picked by him because uh, the game got reset. So... I, I would definitely love to see it. I mean, we were talking about it at the very start of this, about how diverse Captain Shrimps is, how many champions he's mm -hmm. played in EGL alone in the round robin. <laughs> eight games. He only played one champion twice, and that was Galio. So seven different champions no, in eight games. Sorry. He will pull out anything of that magical hat of his. He's got a, a whole sea of champions with which to, to pick from. And of those, he picks the pirate. Um, whole planet. That seems like some irony to me, but... <laughs> Who would you say? Um, we do actually also don't get the salty run back. We didn't talk about that at all. Uh, we do have insanely powerful lanes, though, from AoE. Look, the, like the Aurelia, the Kennen are both uh, particularly good laners, and they're very good at team fighting as well. So they've kept that. Their CC is a bit lower than what we saw in the previous game. Uh, so there's that to talk about as well. As the range is also quite a bit lower. So Gangplank feels extremely good into this comp, just because, again, Kennen's got to throw his body into a team with the ultimate. Aurelia's got to do the exact same thing. Lee Sin's got to do the exact same thing with his Q. Uh, so it's easy to get barrels, and especially with crit plank being mm. very powerful especially after this patch uh things could get dicey if you're playing on top of a powerful gang gangplank yeah it always gets terrifying when you get towards that late stage gangplank just throws down the barrel one pops and there goes most of your health bar but oh dean and dean dean i see the face i see the expression and i also see singed locked in for lawrence. c9 am lawrence you madman you are <laughs> this is awesome so this is lawrence man I, I'm very curious what exactly the strategy is here with the likes of the Singed. Only because into a cannon, I, I don't know how good that matchup is. <laughs> it feels like something that could be aggressed against. And with the low range, it's very difficult to just like run down a Singed. Um, but this is not something people are playing very commonly. I think Singed got some buffs in the recent patches, so it did make him a lot different. Although I think the Grievous Wounds is 11-18, so we don't quite have that yet when he uses the ultimate. So this is just Speedo saying, I'm comfortable with the Singed into Aurelia and or Kennen, depending on where they decide to put those <laughs> champions. I, I can give some respects, Mr. Lawrence, if you're able to make this work. Props to you. Just just, just wait. He's going to fool us all, and it's going to be a Captain Shrimps champion, and we're going to see oh. Singed, maybe. You know. <laughs> Just... Mid lane, <laughs> you can't even proxy on mid lane. <laughs> He's just like sitting between the towers in the mid lane, being able to do that kind of thing. They have a really powerful forward fighting comp, though. Look at that. You got Aurelia, Cannon, and Rakan to just throw their bodies in, as well as Lee Sin. And then Vayne is just there to pick up the pieces of whoever's left after the fight is continued. We talked about this as well. Zaya got a bunch of buffs at 11 17. Yeah. Already was peeking her head into the meta. Very powerful champion for being able to exploit early. Now up against her partner, of course, Rakan on the opposite side. I think you're fine with that because you've got the Leona in your own hands. Uh, it is a wonky composition. Um, is Keep this... it right there. Keep it right there. Keep it right there. Their, their, expectation, oh my their God. expectation was the Aurelia. <laughs> I was thinking maybe they're like, okay, if they're anticipating Aurelia in the top lane, maybe that's where the Singed is going to go. 
They're keeping I, the singed in the you mid still, lane. You still Dean. have the possibility. Dean, they're doing it. It might not be singed mid. It might be singed top lane, but it's just Captain Shrimps is playing it because Speedo does not. There is that possibility as well. Yeah, yeah. Are we... Can we get, like, a check from somebody seeing whether somebody this is the first ever this, singed mid lane? It actually might be. I, I've never seen it. This, this champion's spots. been picked, like, nine times ever. And then never in the mid lane. Okay, okay. I, I, I got to look this up right now. This is, this is insane. No <laughs> We're about to way. see Singed in the mid lane. I just want to run this. Okay, so we talked about C9's discipline. And their idea of discipline is, yo, bro, <laughs> you see a rally of mid lane, <laughs> pick me Singed. <laughs> I I am a, I am very well studious inside of this game. I know nothing about singed mid lane. I just control F singed in mid and nothing. I just got a bunch of do 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 do, which means error. <laughs> oh okay. my god! If Captain um, Shrimps actually keeps it in the mid lane, this is this is, this is insane. gonna be a blast. This, this is, is absolutely blast. insane. I'm trying to think of the positives of this, right? All so right, right. it's a smaller lane, so that means it's mm -hmm. easier to to have. There's less surface area to cover with your keel. Um, that right, word Matt. is confusing, but basically less space, more gas, good, good things. Easier to harass with inside of the mid lane. The other thing is like, it. he's very fast to be able to rotate if he's able to move quickly. If you go like ghost or something like that, he's got flash and teleport right now to move around the map. If he is in mid lane, the combination of singed with the likes of like the, uh, the Viego that they have in the jungle, the jungle support you've got there, that 2v2 has to be infuriating. For a relic at least in because you have to chase a singed into the viego who can just turn at any point stun you auto q you got three auto attacks and the singed poison and the singed flip that 2v2 in melee just like it is impossible to chase so maybe that's the idea here i think it's a little far out there very Month far out half. there <laughs> it's a little far out there <laughs> but you know what it's fine Where... i'm excited to see it one way or another uh, according to Joshua Joshi Howard, who sent me a private message right now, he said Singed has seen zero mid lane plays ever in pro, according we have to GOL. Broken history. Captain Shrimps, if he takes it mid lane, will be the first ever mid lane Singed. We talked about a, a champion ocean. What is bigger than an ocean? I've had to have this discussion before with Neptune. people. Neptune. He's got a he's got a <laughs> champion Neptune to work with if he's pulling out Singed planet, man. mid, man. Uh, okay, okay, how does this work out as a comp as a whole? Because we've just been so, like, shocked by the Singe that we haven't <laughs> looked how this actually slots in and how this is going to play Wait, out. Let's go back to AoE, because, again, AoE's okay. competition <laughs> is very clear-cut, right? Yeah, let's, this go, is let's like, go to the easy one to explain. Let's go to the easy one. <laughs> Harassment top lane, it's a ranged top laner into a gank. Like, it's probably not... It, it, you're able to trade back and forth, but, again, Kennen usually is able to get the better of Harassment to start with. It really is a very powerful champion. It fits into both laning if you've got support, also in duels, also in team fights. Pretty much across the board unless you get behind early. Um, and then Vayne is really intriguing to me only because it's very single target focused and you've got three mm -hmm. melee champions, two of which are really focused on kind of counteracting the engage that's going to come in from like Kennen, Aurelia, uh, Lee Sin, and then the Rakan that are coming out between the Singed and the Gangplank. So the focus is maybe having someone that is self-sustaining on the other side of the fight in case XU decides to die, in case Singe decides to run past everybody and go for a one-on-one. -on -one. Vayne is the selection there to give Sketch Dream's ability to fight in that case. Oh and that's God. why AoE's composition is great. He's taking a mid lane. He's taking oh a mid lane. We He's broke it. it. This is it. it. This is actually League of Legends it. is broken. This is, Throw the this whole is game disgusting. away. It's broken. Please, do not, no one, if I see one person in solo queue running this because of this game, I am going to yell at Captain <laughs> Shots, I swear. I'm going to personally yell at him. He's going to fly over to wherever his house is and just You're gonna get curse demoted. all the solo queue. You'll be Sergeant Shrimps from now on. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't okay. believe we've ended up at this state of League of Legends. Our first game was 48 minutes with a Xerath mid lane, and now we get singed mid lane. I'm going to stop talking about it. I want to talk about everybody else on the team. Yeah, Their yeah. bot lane, insanely powerful. Zaya and, and like uh, Leona have been a good combination for a long time, and now that Zaya is like, very powerful, or at least much more powerful than she was just a few months ago, this bot lane is something that could be significantly difficult for Zyko specifically to deal with. So there's that to talk about. You also, again, you have scaling on Speedo, and, it, and when you're talking about returning fire 
against the likes of Faisal, Darkwings, and RBM, their champions wanting to move into your range with their bodies, especially like Rakan as well. None of them are particularly tanky, which means if you do go grip, crit plank, you get to like three, four items. That's like 1k barrels that are going to get dropped <laughs> on your head. I don't know that you want to fight fast enough to respond to single ability 1k damage without anybody else really being a part of the picture. So now it just begs the question of like, how does AoE get an advantage early if you do have Speedo as like your ticking time bomb for the side of C9 AF? That's something they pay attention to. Can they slow down Speedo by just like shutting him out of the laning phase with Faisal and pressure on the top side? Or can they get their composition far enough ahead that it doesn't matter if Crit Plank comes through, they just have enough ability to win a fight that quickly. Well, time's going to really tell as you watch over towards his top side, and you're kind of seeing the standard characteristics of that gangplank and the abuse it can do when it comes to that early game. Even though he is that scaling champion, those early levels are hell to deal with when you're wow. dealing with the GP. And yeah, Faisal's definitely seeing it. Pain. Uh, pretty much across the board. Corrupting Potion is empty for that, though. As well as early level two. Drops Breezy, very low health. No. Oh, oh my first god. First blood! Oh, uh, here we go! First Sage blood! Sage first blood! It's happened indeed! 100% no. first blood ray on Singed mid lane. <laughs> I hate this. I hate that this is gonna work. That's the worst part. Again, we talk about the support that you can have as Singed in the jungle matchup. Darkwings roams in looking to just put down a ward or something like that because his wave is shoved slightly, followed by Captain Shriek's XU just finds him out on interesting pathing. And Darkwings is like, why can't I flash? Because it's Singed mid lane. That's why he can't flash. You already tried to flash before the fling, buddy, but far, far too late. And here comes Captain Strips. Oh the mid lane is not his, no the top way. lane is as well. And he is going to wreak havoc all over the Rifting. I... So he's going to turn Singed into effectively a Twisted Fate by just running everywhere. He wants to make his impact known across the map. It's pretty much the only way this is ever going to work, too, right? This champion is, like, already difficult to try to manage in teamfights whatsoever. He just runs down Faisal! <laughs> like, Faisal gets a little... He, he gets a little curious. He's like, are they still chasing me? Shrimps throws the W because he's blind because he didn't see that rush. And, and Faisal's like, all right, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. I can't even flash because I have to flash in the direction. Two kills for the singed mid lane to begin the game. Can I show so much love to our producers right now for showing his walk from the mm -hmm. mid lane to Faisal? Like, that is the important part when it comes Can to we... Sage, because that is, like, basically his kid. <laughs> <laughs> can we just picture and picture a constant stream on Singe the entire <sighs> time so we can keep a track on him? Because I don't think we're going to be able to. Yeah, this... this is a Singe stream. It is a Singe stream. It's going to become a Singe stream. Um, there is the fact that, like, if Captain Shrimps isn't careful with his wave, then eventually Darkwings just just to scale him like be well beyond anything. In fact, right to this moment, he's, he's at double CS yes, because he's been literally out of lane the entire time. It's reminiscent of like it's yes, yes, camp. yes, okay. It's reminiscent of core JJ's like Shen pick that like had like 0.1% like like he like presence in the bottom lane. It's like that, but mid lane for some reason, which does not work as well when you have to take experience. So there's that to pay attention to. His, it, it's worked twice, but again, so far, this this is actually not great, just because, again, he's down 20 CS to an Aurelia, opening up the laning phase for Darkwing's Aurelia to really pop off in teamfights eventually. But every time he goes missing, Faisal goes into panic mode, mm -hmm. takes the recall. He's already being bullied by Speedo, but here comes the engage going for the bot lane. Okay. Zenith Blade goes out, but Breezy is not able to find too much else. Slippery mm -hmm. fella is that Rakan. Yes, uh, the CC lands. Um, if you're not able to set up your feathers fast enough, then that means Witsy can't kind of combo with it with the, like the feather pull with the E. That's a chunk of the damage that's going to come down onto the Rakan. Zyko does still have to be extremely careful. He's still very squishy, which means if he gets in the face of Leona and you're able to set up feathers, it's essentially just an execute pretty much immediately unless it's flashed just second by second here from the likes of the Rakan, uh, which is what makes this landing phase pretty difficult. It also is going to put Sketch Dreams in kind of a rough position where like he's essentially going to be on his own in the 2v2, Rakan can do a bit more for peeling. I also love that right there. He pulled the key with the Relic Stack, so they were able to get that cannon minion. But uh, this is just a losing lane state for the most part that's going to have to be dealt with by the likes of the Vayne and the likes of the Rakan. That means impact for the entire map is going to go to Wixie and Breezy for the foreseeable future on the bottom side. 
and it's going to be very hard for that to change. It's always going to be a threat in the bot side as well. I mean, you were talking about the buffs that came out for Zaya. Remember, there were nerfs that came out for Leona, but nothing towards her damage, nothing towards her no. passive. So she still is quite a threat if she is able to lock it down. That is the case. And I like that C9, they capitalize <laughs> off of the bot lane pressure and the mid lane roaming, <laughs> and they're able to move into bottom side again wanting to make sure that they've got pressure for XU. Because the XU is a lot of like what's re absorbing resource in this early game, the Viego, the perfect champion to do that with. This time, Speedo's not playing something that's super aggressive early, like the Renekton instead has the more scaling pick. So now they can leave topside pretty much untouched. The, the, the Singe we've talked about a bunch, but again, when he's able to roam support XU the way that he does, just by, you know, tanking waves and just giving them over to Darkwings in exchange, uh, and having this powerful bot side, it means they can control Dragon Pit really effectively. Maybe the plan here is just to go into kind of like a Dragon stacking kind of win condition, and not worry about what would be like gold advantage that would happen on top side, because again, Faisal should be able to move pretty quick compared to the Gangplank, and your Aurelia is usually going to be a lot stronger than what your Singed is going to be to start this game, just because of the CS differential. But wait until he gets online, Dean. Wait until Singed gets run, and wait until mm -hmm. he gets his boots. He started Seeker's Arm Guard, which is just like... He can start armor items. He 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 does that as well. He doesn't have to build AP, but here we see Captain Shrimps dipping into the more like mage type build. Oh wow, okay, Speedo's uh, on the wrong side of the map. Yeah, Speedo in a rough spot. XU That's tries to help him out, but I don't know if you want to join in that fight. <laughs> 1v3 instantly gonna back off. Cannon Barrage goes out, but the rest of the squad of C9 Amateur are in the area, including Captain Shrimps himself. <laughs> Runs around, I'm not willing to chase anything else, but oh. here comes Darkwing's ultimate gonna be used. Nice. Breezy gonna get caught nice. out as the slicing males from finds a nice stun oh, on the Breezy. Chase him, but Breezy, chase Breezy tried no. to chase him down and now push no. into the what? tower. Captain Shrimps blocks him from getting away and grabs another kill. Evening this up 1-1 one, one apiece, but still looking for more. Tries to get the stun. XC will not be able to claim it and wild exchange there. But Captain Shrimps, man, he's got the 100% kill participation, Dean. It's so painful because they just like over chase into a singe and that's like the number one rule of League of Legends and a lot of people right? consider it. <laughs> Since season one. It's so long that this champion has been around and still like, it, this is a situation where it's like, okay, maybe we can get the assassination. Captain Shrimps is able to get a flip in the last second. Speedo trying to get this ward actually does get it in the right position. Zyko thankfully again is able to roam knowing that like Vayne on the bottom side of the map should be okay. Um, and was able to move a lot faster because they didn't see him on the map. Breezy comes up to help support this system. This whole time, though, again, because Captain Shrimps doesn't have too much pressure in the wave, Darkwings is able to come a lot faster. I loved the Faisal ultimate. I thought it was gorgeous here. This is where things got kind of crazy because Captain Shrimps just covering for Breezy. Darkwings gets a little bit antsy, gets flipped under tower, yep. and I... What are you going to do? Like, at least not much to do. I was more terrified that if a flash <laughs> was up, there was going to be even more ramifications for this, that RBM was going to get run down. Thankfully, uh, Zyko was able to press his W before that stun really got under underway, and so he was able to get out of that situation without XU being able to punish him further. Yeah. I, I love the fact that Captain Shrimps didn't even try to auto. He wasn't doing anything else than trying to uh, body block Darkwings from getting out from the tower. Now, he just stood there and pressed S. This man's going for a bit of junk drawer on the Singed as well. It looks like Demonic Embrace is going to be his first item, and then, of course, he has Seeker's Arm Guard. So it's going to be a minute before he has his Mythic. Uh, but those are some pretty powerful items. Demonic is very hard to deal with. It gives him a lot of defensive stats. You consider that and his ultimate, and you're talking like 80, 80 armor magic resist just to begin the game, as well as having a good amount of health, the tick damage added onto the likes of the poison. Um, it's a fair amount of utility. It really is used as pretty much just a buffer inside of these team fights to prevent these champions from chasing. Um, it's a very intriguing strategy, but it's what Captain Trims has opted for. Um, he's not too bad right now in terms of CS. He's down 24 compared to his lane opponent, which is like four whole waves, but He's making an impact. Two kills so far. If he's able to right. beat this disruptor in team fights, I mean, uh, it's working out. I mean, come on, Dean. This is what we usually see on uh, Singe in competitive play. As we see a dive going for the bot lane, but to try and find Breezy. Has to back up as the Feather Storm comes out. Now Zyko's the one who's caught out. Captain Shrimps runs amok all over the place and flings! <laughs> he's so yes, fast! He's so fast, but finally the brakes are applied. Yes. Not before the damage is done. Captain Shrimps will sacrifice his life, but three will be picked up. That is from AOE. Insane.
man, that's insane. The team fight breaks into like three specific components for the side of AME, and they're just like, <laughs> not able to pick a moment. The other big thing is like, Sketch Streams got driven out so quickly by Wixie, and if three feathers had hit Psycho, Zyko almost certainly would have been one shot by just a feather call that had come out from that E. So two members of that fight were gone before anybody else showed up, and that's when Captain Trim starts to get to run him up. The ultimate from Aurelia was completely west. So many things in that fight just got completely disrupted. This is the intention, I guess, behind the C9 composition, is just throw complete disarray into your enemies. Because like, if they can't pay attention to everything that's happening in front of them, it's more like playing an RTS than playing Because <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> you got to pay attention to so much at once. Yeah, you see Speedo there, Captain Shrimps. Everyone's <laughs> all over the place. Captain Shrimps does his mm -hmm. job, and he does his job well to be yeah. able to find that kill. Uh, ultimately, like, how do you deal with this? How do you respond to this? Your attention is split everywhere on the map when you see this disaster going on, when you see Captain Shrimps playing Deja Vu, I've been in this place before, <laughs> drifting. Good it's God. A terrible situation to be in. Even worse, notice also one of the main kind of, like, scaling options here from the side of C9AM is this gangplank who pulled three kills excuse No way he just slipped the with the W. That was insane. He had Probably. to have like pick like frames of ability to see that before they saw him and they just immediately engage on him. Maybe they were trying to be patient, wait for him to full commit to the camp first, but like they, they feels like that could have been an execute onto XQ, but XQ outplays that situation very well. A little bit of a jump scare in that bush, XQ responds <laughs> to it quite well. And Breezy will continue his roam as he's just taken away ward after ward, establishing vision of his own. The rest of AoE kind of tailing him as Breezy tails onto RBM, but not willing to go any bit further. Just the control ward going to be placed out in this little war of vision going on 13 <laughs> minutes in. Able to keep their their yeah, kind of stealth ward up, though. So thankfully, that's going to be the case. XU also knows there's a ward in that brush because they, they had to have seen it some way. So <laughs> that has to be the case. They're hanging around. This is just a pure vision war. Notice uh, also the Captain Strips is just split pushing. He got a whole plate. Three members of AoE were standing there, not like just in the defense of one of their wards instead of going up and pushing off Captain Strips from that tower. This really is just a, it's like an IQ drain composition from the side of C9 AM. But it's like they have Sinch, they have like, like Gangplank Ultimate they have to worry about. They have to worry about resets from like, uh, from the Viego, they have to worry about feather position from Wix. There's so many extra things you have to pay attention to that you just can't do it all at once. The, the, the brain power required to play a game like this is astronomical. <laughs> Only 200 IQ people are able to survive this composition. Evidently. So much to deal with on the side of C9 AM. And what I'm curious about right now is going to be the goal difference in the mid lane between mm -hmm. Captain Shrimps and Darklings. How much has Captain Shrimps been able to affect the map, been able to affect the lanes overall is now we're going to have an engage between supports, a little bit of support will come back. Wixie will join up, but no uh, trigger being pulled. We are back on our vision in. warfare, man. That's the same rush <laughs> this, we were in just a second rush. ago. They really desperately just want to set up this top side, uh, like play for what is effectively like the top tower. Maybe they're trying to get Tappy Shrimps into like a proxy situation where they can control that quadrant, and so he's just able to freely stand between the towers, and nobody can really kill him because he's got Rylai's on his singe now, which means that nobody's able to catch him literally ever. Uh, you're gonna get that first touch on display. Oh, <laughs> oh, Dark Wings. Oh no. Dark Wings, rough spot to be, my friend. Rough spot to be. Kill picked up. XU will be able to pocket that one thanks to everyone's favorite mid laner, Captain Shrimps. Goodness me. And even worse is like, you've got Kennen on the other side of the map responding. Kennen is ridiculously far down right now across from the gangplank. <clears throat> off the back of just like the combination of like farming, but then also the team fights have gone really heavily into Speedo. So Speedo can just leave bot lane, walk into mid, cover mid lane against the duo that is down there. And top side quadrant now completely controlled. They get the kill. Rift Herald's going to be set up. That top tower is going to soak another minion wave that's not going to go into the pockets of the Aurelia. And even worse, like gangplank's still able to shift into bottom, grab all that wave. All this gold is not being lost from the side of C9 off the back of some of these plays because they're covering effectively across the map, making these rotations. And even better, this bot lane that we're in mid off the back of everything get to help support with the Rift Herald play. There's not even really a chance for AoE to move in and contest the side of the Rift Herald from C9. Yeah, and this is the beautiful play that we saw in game number one from Cloud9 Amateur where they did do all this setup before they made the plays that they made. Uh, the real test for them is going to be once we head towards this mid-game point, once we hit that 20-minute, 25-minute point, and we see what AoE can do, and more specifically, once the lanes are free, what Captain Shrimp can do on this inch. Make somebody's life miserable. 
He is he is back into junk drawer territory. He has Rylai's and he has also built the orb, which means that he's going to go for Morello. Probably is what's going to happen here. Uh, Stale has yet to even touch into a mythic item. Overrated. Not, not, just only owned right here for the likes of Captain Shrimps. Uh, he he's he's looking at a mobile fire guide from 2012 <laughs> uh, somewhere around there. <laughs> he still had Rylai's back then. <laughs> yeah, he's, he did still build Rylai's for his back. <laughs> That's at least something yeah. to pay attention to. This is... Ooh, here comes RBM. Looks for Breezy, but can't get too much. Doesn't want to really risk it. Yeah, they, they don't really have the ability. Like, even if they find a way to get onto Wixie right there, like, Wixie can always just ultimate flash heal. He's got plenty of resources in terms of defense. And then you have the turn of XQ and, and Breezy with all the CC that those two have. This is so hard for the side of AoE to, like, force into. They don't really have the way to set up a team fight properly. And now TP in the mid lane with Rift Herald, they're going to try to force down mid lane tower, especially with Dragon up. If they stand around, maybe this is a... an opportunity. Faisal is... Watch Faisal, oh watch Faisal, watch Faisal, oh watch Faisal, slicing! Maelstrom cutting play. through! He will drop, but he gets a lot of damage in, making this go even. Looking to jump in, it's going to be RBM. He will be able to get the kill, but it will fall to Wixie on the back end of that fight. A three for three exchange. It didn't look like it was going to go that way, but Faisal demanded it be even. It's easy, or it's really tough to try to set up five on five. Does it again? This is Faisal again. Four members into this slicing maelstrom that's able to set up. It's the Relia Smith that's from the Zaya. All this area is just completely controlled from the side of AoE. They do end up trading evenly. They grab the dragon, so it ends up being very heavily, or they're, they're able to take this completely into their favor with everybody coming their way. I don't know how AoE continues to get away with it. Their five on five composition trying to find these big AoE ultimates somehow does pan out despite being down 5,000 gold. C9 AM at least do trade back, and they still have gold on their gangplank to work with. That's still a terrifying thought for the future. That was a worry for C9AM, how some of these fights are going to play out once we get towards that 5v5 mm -hmm. phase, because that's where we've been seeing AoE shine out much more. Now, a lot of vision being established over towards the Sparren side as Breezy just dances around a little bit, looking at Scuttle. Even a quick wave goodbye before AoE take it and setting up back towards that mid lane. Captain Shrimps, however, will be in the side lane alongside Speedo, so you have that 1-3-1 now starting to be set up. By C9 Amateur. Uh, you do. With TP's down, actually, TP's are down from the side of C9. They're not down from the side of AoE. They can respond in the side lanes very effectively here uh, to be able to just, like, kind of put pressure elsewhere on the map and then TP for advantage. This is where AoE actually can look to try to kind of turn this game back into their favor. If they can make some, like, favorable things happen with Faisal's TP, especially on a flank around an objective or in a bigger fight, the same thing with Darkwings, maybe they can turn some of this gold back into their uh, into their own pocket instead of continuing to, to kind of give it up to the side of C9 AM. That Dragon takes stalls this game a little longer to continue to fish for some of these bigger fights. Uh, it's still not easy at all, um, especially now with Speedo on a Mortal Shield bow. It's defensive uh, in terms of like the crit. That's really stacking very quickly with the Essence Reaver. XU also. Uh, not giving XU the chance to reaction out of that <laughs> one. No. The ultimate being popped by Zyko preemptively to make sure that the charm is going to land. Continuing now is going to be RBM as it goes after Breezy. Mm -hmm. Breezy will be able to escape. Pretty tanky boy, but a good pickoff coming out from AoE. Second game in a row as well where we see C9 kind of have this mid-game lull where, like, so far we haven't really seen XU be able to convert. Uh, Speedo is scaling up. Wixie's also scaling up. But that early game presence that we saw from Captain Shrimps to be able to attack side lanes kind of has, has fallen to pieces. XU now, uh, he's getting resources, but it's harder to unlock them just because, again, when these are, are a little bit more broken you have to play a little further back off the fear of, of something like that happening where like aoe just jumps on you out of nowhere and so now aoe is able to capitalize a little bit the gold lead is still 5,000 gold for c9 am but again if, if things are indicative the way that they were in the previous game c9 did have a very kind of uh exploitable or at least a slower pace in mid game that ended up leading to like the 30 35 minute mark where eventually aoe was able to find their fights uh, i want to see them get more active because they have a ton of power in especially their like top and in their ADC right now between Wixie and Speedo. I want to see them force their issue with this gold advantage just to try to help close this game a lot cleaner. Yeah, the power you're talking about, looking at the scoreline alone, 4-1-3 mm -hmm. over on Speedo, 2 5 on Wixie. So a lot of power indeed as C9 amateurs start splitting the map, taking down that mid lane, instantly going to go into the blue side jungle of AoE. Start getting vision in that direction. We got a minute 20 before Mountain Drake does spawn as we are now 21 minutes into this game. <laughs> it is another territory where, again, if C9 doesn't push their issue, you have to be afraid of Faisal every single time that you're going to be near a team fight. 
He's still down 50 CS. This Gangplank is still insanely powerful, but if again, if Cannon's able to get one slicing Maelstrom into three plus people inside of a fight, it's not going to matter what happens with GP unless he just carries the fight afterwards, because that initial kind of burst is going to buy enough space for Sketch Dreams, Dark Wings to kind of clean up afterwards. There's that to consider as well. Uh, across the board, ADCs are both insanely powerful, although, again, I think Wixie on this Zaya is going to have a lot easier a time putting auto attacks into AoE's comp than the opposite being true for Sketch Streams, because Sketch Streams has to focus like one at a time, doesn't have the same kind of defensive tools that the ultimate available to himself. And so Wixie feels like last game on the Ziggs, all about the poke to, to kind of throw in with everything. This feels much more like a Wixie champion where he's able to kind of push his own advantage and you know, like win team fights for his team. And that feels like, uh, that, that's really good for C9 AM. That, that feels like something they should have been banking on from, from game number one. Yeah. And continuing the comparison between the two ADCs, you know, Vayne does have that very short range, which is quite deadly. Um, can be quite... Ooh, thought he was going to go in <laughs> for that one right there. Be quite a nuisance to have to deal with. I mean, you're going to be in a situation where you're trying to get close to a lot of these uh, frontliners on the side of C9AM, and these frontliners want you close <laughs> to them. Breezy will go for the engage. Uh, Captain Shrimps is happy to fling you out of there. This dragon is going to be picked up, putting sole point into C9AM. And it will. And that's that's going to be a point of contention since now, uh, again, with oh, actually Faisal being engaged onto, is able to stun up Breezy. We'll get the Fine. stun, but the stun is returned. Faisal goes all over the place. Here comes the slicing oh. Maelstrom. So much damage able to go through. It's going to be one for one trade so far. Captain Strip is able to get one, but the double goes over to Sketch. Uh, Sketch trying to play this vein as best as he can over the wall. Here comes the chase. Sketch still oh. alive. We'll get the triple before falling. Now Captain Shrimp's trying to do some work on the Dark Wings as RBM shows up. Captain Shrimp's going to make the retreat instead. A very close exchange as we go three for three once again. Two fights in a row now. The attempted pick onto the likes of Faisal ends up leading to multiple members of, of C9 just kind of closing in to close that kill out. And even without Zonia's, Faisal's able to get almost an entire slicing Maelstrom and a ton of damage off into this team. And then... Yo, along comes Sketch Streams, who in this little corridor is able to focus down two separate members before a fight really starts to break out. The important bit also being able to put some pressure onto Speedo, find that shutdown goal. It's big for Sketch teleport. Streams. I just said, oh wait, teleport. Oh, into bottoms. Uh oh. Mm. Oh, Faisal. <laughs> yeah, Did he teleport Faisal. here? Please he tell me. He teleported down teleport. here. Okay. He's looking straight for Captain Shrimps. Okay. <laughs> Like hey, look no... how much damage he took. He did a lot of. I was worried he was gonna get self up <laughs> right there. Like, <laughs> if he teleports to his own death off the back of this, that's gonna be tragic. Uh, again, Faisal multiple times now in some of these fights have made such a massive impact on this cannon despite not having. This is where uh, he's rooted, gets flipped, oh, the flash the back on top of that in order to get the slicing maelstrom onto multiple members. And look where Sketch Strings is. One target down, two targets focused down immediately. And over the top of the uh, the, the, the pit goes Speedo. Uh, Speedo gets put into the wall, has to flash, and then the trade, of course, of the two of them goes to Sketch Strings because he had the shutdown this entire time. This was creative from AoE to not only be able to get, like, a great slicing maelstrom somehow off the back of what looked like a pick on the Faisal, but also to somehow buy one to one to one matches for the vein to just like win all the way through is super difficult to try to accomplish. AoE, man, their team fighting is insane over the course of these last two games. Setting themselves up for high levels of success is really hard to do with these disadvantages they found themselves at. Yet here we are continuing to talk about how well they've been able to play some of these yeah. out. Uh, brings me back to like the season three, season four days when Vayne was a big champion that only the most mechanical players can play. Uh, Sketch Dreams bringing out the Vayne mechanics right there in that last bit. Uh, able to take down Speedo before he fell down himself and putting himself at a good scoreline now at the four, two, and three. Has a lot working out for him. Already two items completed, working on that third item and almost done with it already. You do. Uh, we have Crit Plank online as well i want to note that that this these barrels are going to start to hit excruciatingly hard um they get penetration already and they have 25 percent increased damage and you got the infinity edge for additional increased damage plus you're sitting on like 60 percent crit right now as it is uh up to 80 percent now i think actually with uh with the additional cloak so things are crazy things are really barrels, crazy man. speedo is going to hit very hard um we have hit that point where again that that timer was there for the side of aoe where now assassinating Speedo becomes a very real 
necessity inside of these fights, just to make sure that there's some way of doing that. The question is who's able to. Faisal's been able to find a couple of good flanks, but I don't know that his damage is still enough to just bring down Gangplank altogether, especially with oranges up. Um, to me, it comes down to, like, can you layer multiple forms of CC, whether it be the Rakan, whether it be the Aurelia, on top of that Faisal engage so that he's pressured completely out of the fight or just goes down immediately as it is. Uh, it does open up that kind of counterplay of, like, Diego gets to go in, Singe gets to go in. But again, you cannot let him get a single barrel chain into your team because multiple members are going to be dropped below half health almost instantaneously if you allow that to happen. Yeah, get one on the sketch, and he's pretty much out of commission for that fight. He's someone you desperately need as a fight. Almost looks like it's going to break out quite soon. RBM looking to try and contest this red buff. Red buff gets low. It's going to be stolen away. XU is able to grab it. Will RBM go for the, hor uh, the ward hop over the wall? Not going to take it. Instead, he landed the Sonic Wave onto Breezy. That's not a target you want to get. Leona could lock you down quite quickly. So AoE just trying to chase C9AM out of their own jungle. C9AM really having a lot of control of this map, but giving a lot of caution to AoE in the process. Yeah, so C9AM, they, they want to fight in a corridor because, again, it's so much easier to try to hit barrel chains when people get pinched into it. Here's the engagement AoE find gank like the mid lane. Looking to try and find Wixie, but Wixie's able to back out in time. Now Speedo Ooh. gets stunned up. A lot of damage on the Speedo. Vysol trying to find more. Gets him down to about half health. He will retreat underneath his tower. C9AM are a little bit split now mm -hmm. as they play around this river, dancing between AoE and this Drake. Out comes one barrel, and that's what we're talking about. One crit barrel goes through. So much damage. Zyko. Pretty low now, falls to about half health as Captain Shrimp starts the retreat, looking for the re-engage. Zyko cannot find it. The blast plant in time for C9AM. Going forward is going to be XU, cannot get the oh! stun. RM, <laughs> RBM, excuse me, too deep into this dragon pit. Now here comes the engage. Then the play is going to go out looking for the solar flare. Sonic Wave is going to follow suit as Captain Shrimp tries to play. Oh, the distraction, but Faisal will fall before he can get the work done with a slicing maelstrom. Captain Shrimp follows. Darkwings trying to do work, but it's going to be Wixie here who's going to get away with the autos, get away with bringing the pace. Sketch Streams over the wall trying to find Wixie. It's going to be the 1v1 between the ADCs. A triple kill going over to Sketch Streams, but he has to back off because he's dealing with the Viego, who now has that Lee Sin, doesn't even need it. Got to use the ultimate one more time to call right. him down to finally secure the ace. I, I have to say, once again, AoE's ability to try to find these fights in really terrible positions has been great. This was Zyko missing. He's half health. They hit another barrel here to knock them down to half health, and still it's Faisal, and combined with Darkwings, who did an incredible amount of, uh, you know, kind of danger, like, like damage inside of this fight, that are able to turn things with these big ultimates. A lot of them had been burnt by C9 ahead of time, and because they're able to turn with these big ultimates to change things up, it ends up being a lot closer of a fight that C9 would have liked with a 5,000 gold lead across the board to be able to work with here. And you see, back line, like Darkwing's kills too, immediately gets onto Breezy, able to bring down Captain Shrimps as well as Get Shrimps' help. And this whole time now, you get to see what has been kind of cooking in the background for C9 other than Speedo, which has been Wixie, who has been untouched, unkilled for the entirety of this game, able to put out really good damage with the feathers and the likes. And Zaya stalled this long enough, and eventually it comes down Sketch Streams versus Wixie with a higher health bar for Fane, ends up taking this fight, losing things all together. But I, I, I cannot give enough props consistently to the side of AoE, who are finding fight after fight, man. It is insane how far down they have been over the course of this series and how well they've been able to play out some of these 5 on 5s even though they're at a deficit. But now uh, the real challenge begins because we got Dragon Soul on C9AM. C9AM now posturing up towards the Baron side as Breezy leads the charge, always being aggressive, looking to find that front line and engage onto anyone he sees fit. RBM, you better be careful on that side of the rift. You also have Speedo doing a split push in the bot lane, so someone from AoE is going to have to respond to that. Darkwing's top side. Still has his teleport mm -hmm. available, so he can go down yeah. there if he does need to match it. Another big thing is, like, with the ultimate available from Gangplank, it means he doesn't have to commit TP to be available onto the bottom side of the map, which is another really big and beneficial part of playing the Gangplank, is that, like, if you trade TP for TP and go back to side lane, Faisal doesn't have that impact. Faisal is so much more important than the Gangplank inside of the fight. Not that Gangplank is weak, more so that Faisal is necessary for AoE to be able to even compete 
inside of a fight for the side of AoE. Uh, and so that means Speedo can start to really press the uh, the advantage in the side lane as much as possible. I want to see him continue to do so, just to try to drag Faisal around the map, prevent this kind of amazing playmaker from doing anything. Not even going to hype this up, because like RBM even got bored doing that. Yeah, that's the tricky part right there. Oh, if you landed on no. Captain Shrimps, Captain Shrimps will land it on you. He goes right after Darkwing, wow. so the team fight's gonna begin. But Sketch is there, Sketch is on check. Sketch is getting in a lot of items as he tries to Faisal. back away from Captain Shrimp. Slicing Maelstrom! Faisal dives deep into C9 Amateur. It will not be enough. Sketch is still up, but so are five wow. members of Cloud9 AM. And they're gonna finish the job to finish up the ace right there, right onto Sketch. And they're gonna look to close this game out, team, and make this a I thought AoE was going to do it again. I thought they were going to be able to turn that fight. I thought Faisal's ultimate off the TP was going to be enough, but they can't kill even a single member. They stay defensive enough. Thank you for zooming in on the singed mid lane, dying there at the very last possible second. Off the back of team fighting, the scaling of this gangplank and this Zayat, C9 is going to take us into game number three. These have been some incredible team fights between these two teams, though. We are bound to just get continue to get battered with these fights. 100% win rate cinched. We got it in the mid lane. Um, <laughs> he, he's no. not Captain Shrimps to me. He's the shrimps. You know, this is just pulling out the... I, I still can't believe he decided uh, that... First blood picked up by Captain Shrimps. He pretty much controlled a lot of the early game, but that takes away too much if we really put too much of the spotlight on him because the rest of Cloud9 Amateur really showed up here today. The Singe drew a lot of our attention to start with and was just like there a lot of the game being a nuisance <laughs> across the board the way a Singe likes to do. But again, the Gangplank's barrels being able to scale up like that, Wixie's proficiency on some of these team fighting champions and on ADCs, especially in that last fight, being able to stay safe, uh, can't give enough props is finally they're able to turn enough team fights in their favor with their advantage to be able to take out AoE who... Uh, Man, next game, they got to be taking off team fighting compositions, man. They are way too good at making those look very, very close, despite being down a lot of gold. So uh, remove them, C9. Do not let them get AoE champions to work with again. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. AoE have been looking so good when they are able to get a team fight, and uh, a lot of these team fights are so scrappy and so close. Even that last team fight with all of C9 Amateur alive, you saw that those health bars were blinking red. That's how close AoE were to flipping that game. It was, it was way too close for AoE to be able to flip a game like that off the back of that early lead, off the back of the champions that were held from C9, and it shows that they're they're not backing down. They're not giving a single inch to the side of C9. C9 has to claim these games. Uh, they, there's no rolling over. There's no, we're off to a 5,000 gold deficit. We'll let you take anything you want from the map just so we can try to scale up and eventually get to that place. None of that is going to come here from the side of AoE. They're going to fight you every second they can at every possible instant, and you had better be ready for it, because if you're not, they'll flip the game. That's what happened in game number one. Only Almost happened in game number two. I'm sure it's going to happen in game number three. C9 looked the comfort that they were able to show in this here third game. So maybe that's going to be the play is continue to use this comfort, especially safety for Wixie is something I'm paying attention to. So we are now tied up. It is going to be a series. The first competitive game of mid lane singe has now come to an end. One, one a piece for AOE and Cloud9 Amateur. We're going to throw it over a short break. When we return, we'll get into that game defining final matchup.